welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're after a deer with a pop star with a rifle in Northern Ireland. We are practicing our rifle shooting tips on the Holland and Holland stalking course. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. First, a driven grouse day where students are in charge. It's like Lord of the Flies. Why is today unusual? Well, you may remember a year ago that gamekeeping college Newton Rig in Cumbria was pleased to announce it had taken a lease on the Grouse Moor, the first gamekeeping college to do so. Many months of hard work later and the students are putting on a driven day for luminaries such as Shooting Times editor Alistair Balmain, Duncan Thomas of Basque, their own principal Wes Johnson, chairman of the Moorland Association Robert Benson and top sporting agent Jeremy Cullum. It's a bit like going before a panel of judges. Right, let's get the stressful part of the film out of the way first. Do we see a lot of grouse? We do, Your Honour. The students have performed their job magnificently. Here's one of them. Surprising number of grouse is here. Yeah, there wasn't this many last year. It's grown a lot. There must have been a very good breeding season. So it's not all thanks to you? <laughs> nah, not all me. <laughs> so what kind of work did you do on the moor uh, over the years? So we were doing a lot of pest control with the traps and snares. We did some lamping, a lot of burning. So it's kind of learning and actually doing it at yeah. the same time? getting hands-on with all the work. It's a showcase day, so much so they have asked along the local press. I think most people know about it anyway, because there's, it's a big rural community. Um, I think the surprise would be is obviously the students at Newton Rig organising it and sorting it and doing it particularly by the looks of it, a good job. It's not just grouse on this moor. Good keepering means a range of wildlife. Here is an owl. At the end of drive one, Jeremy Cullum gives his verdict. Absolutely, absolutely terrific. It was, uh, it brought the line in very well. We saw lots of grouse, obviously did the job well. Another one would have been nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, nine half rest. Next drive is special. The beaters are taking it one way and then turning around and taking it back the other. The sporting rights on this moor belong to Lowther Estate and Robert Benson, now chairman of the Moorland Association, has worked here for nearly 40 years. The Kaiser shot from this butt in I think 1906 and again in 1911 when he came to Lowther. <laughs> what we do know is he loved rabbit shooting really and wasn't that fond of the grouse. Standing where Kaiser Bill once stood is Basque Northwest Regional Director Duncan Thomas and he is dazzled by his day so far. I mean to be stood here in paradise with grouse pouring through and the M6 in the distance all those people driving north and south blissfully unaware of uh, What's going on here? What a fantastic day. Brilliant. Some of these youngsters here are seriously uh, impressive. Look at the way the flank has been managed, the be beating lines coming in, all equidistant, all, you know, all perfect, really well disciplined. And it's a credit to the staff here at Newton Rig as well to, to get that uh, this early on. Beating this moor is hot work. As birds are picked and the guns move around, some of the beaters leave their coats at the butts. I'll look after coats if you want. Oh, that would be amazing. Yes. Good. I mean, I yeah. just leave it next to yours. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Uh -huh. I'll bring it back for lunch. Thank you. Last one then, lunch. The beaters are walking miles today and there is time to chat. I get Robert back next and he has more moorland history to tell. We can see three stands of trees on a distant hill. They're known as the Three Squadron of Horse and the tale goes 1745, Butcher Cumberland is chasing the Scots back to the north, back to Scotland. They got to Penrith, where they drank the town dry, woke up the following morning and looked to the south and saw what they thought was the English cavalry coming to get them and skedaddled back to Scotland. Most fantastic stand of beach at over 1,100 feet. The beaters may be newbies, but they are getting a helping hand from some old lags. Here's one with original Lowther Estate brass buttons. Well, I got them from probably the tailor, you know, who makes our suits, Wilkinson's a bruff, you know, but they make them now. They... When did you come? 70? 1973. 73. And you came in about? 76. 76. Yeah. Because yeah. I always remember. A lot saying, yeah. You know, look, at, look at us now, we, we had the same coloured hair once. Right. <laughs> look at mine, look at mine. I keep, I've got this, uh, this um, 
one go away perching my average, which I keep following me around all my life, they bashed me in again last week. Liz Phillip is the capo di capi of the educators. She's principal of Ascombe Bryan College, which runs Newton Reed College. The students just get, you just can't give them this experience. The girl we just had today, first year student from Sussex, she didn't realise how hard it is to walk up hills. Um, fantastic, she really enjoyed her morning and she'll be a lot fitter as a result of it as well. And here is the young lady from Sussex. Is the walking a shock for her? Oh, it's beautiful up here. It's all flat down there. <laughs> the end of the day and everyone has had plenty of shooting. The man who has felt the bulk of the stress for the day is looking happy. Malcolm Riding is director of the Northern School of Game and Wildlife at Newton Rigg, a kind of gamekeeper's gamekeeper. Absolutely delighted, Charlie. Just couldn't be, just couldn't be more delighted. We've had a fantastic day. The guns have had a great day, but I think importantly, the students have just done such a brilliant job. I'm just so delighted. Would you like to be a gamekeeper or indeed train for almost any kind of rural job? For more about courses at Newton Rig, go to newtonrig.ac.uk. Well, some young, talented people there. Thank you, Newton Rig. Now a man who differs from them in two important ways. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. UK shooting's golden couple have got married. Abby Burton and Ed Ling tied the knot in Somerset at the weekend. Both have had a successful 2014, most recently with Ed taking a silver medal in Olympic trap at the World Championships in Spain. Congratulations to them both. Three people fishing on a Brazilian river decided to chase a bloated 17 foot long yellow anaconda. The snake, which looks like it had recently eaten, is pursued by the group, grabbing its tail. After posting the video on YouTube, they were each fined around £400 for harassing the snake and face up to 18 months in prison. The largest confirmed giant anaconda on record was 28 foot long. Maltese shooters have threatened to burn down the government building and kill anything that flies. They are reacting angrily to the government's closure of the autumn hunting season. They also burn the ruling Labour Party's flag. A roe deer has been rescued after it got stuck in the metal railings of a fence in Inverness. It took 20 minutes for the SSPCA to lift the animal at an angle and move one hip through at a time, releasing the deer unharmed. Please can you help us with a lost dog? This special request comes from Roy, whose friend has had his three-year-old Collie taken. Connie is a fully trained working sheepdog. She was last seen in Bursted in Kent at 5.30 on Sunday evening. She has six puppies waiting for her to return, so he's clearly in milk. She's also a much-loved family pet. Please contact Alan on the details below if you have any information. Basque has set up a new deer stalking scheme in Dorset. It offers Basque members a combination of high seat and accompanied foot stalking and is designed to provide practical follow-on experience for people who've completed the deer stalking certificate level one. To take advantage of the scheme, join Basque by visiting bit.ly slash join Basque. And finally, it's been a record year for alligators in the USA. This one caught by a marine sergeant near one of his training areas weighed in at 792 pounds and measured nearly 13 and a half foot from nose to tail, a new Mississippi state record. It's 18 inches short of the new 15 foot record for North America set in Alabama earlier this month. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Charlie, we got picture in Kent. Hello, Charlie. Tex Grebner here of Tex Grebner Outdoors. I'm just out here busy being awesome. Hello, Charlie. Bob here in the Vosges Mountains in France on the opening day of the Driven Boar season. No ball so far, but there's a roebuck in the bag already. Bye. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now I've been off to Ireland to hook up with a pop star. Chris DeMargri from Simply Red is out after a seeker. 
It starts, like all good things, with a challenge. We shoot the deer, we get to drink the wine. Together with his bandmate singer Mick Hucknall, simply red saxophonist, flautist and all-round puffer, Krista Marguerite owns Glenmore Estate in Donegal. It's a sporting paradise with fish, red deer on the southern Irish side of the foil system and where we're going, seeker deer on the northern Irish side. Chris can also lay his hands on rock star class claret, Chateau Talbot, 1982. A very good year. We get to work, we cross the border from County Donegal into County Tyrone to hook up with Chris's friend Barney in Straban. Barney runs a shooting and fishing shop here. I decided to look at the wind coming from behind us at the moment, Charlie. So we're going to go straight out, head round up. And we've got natural forest at the top, and we're going to hopefully intercept them as they come down to feed on those fields. That's the plan. As theories go, it's fine, but like many theories, it doesn't work. There are deer in the wood behind us, but none in the open above us. It's time to move location. We head to a hill where Barney has seen deer, but doubt has crept in, and our subtle approach is not helped by the local steers. We've been lucky enough to come across a couple of stags, but just haven't been lucky enough to uh, get one in the firing line. Well, we shot one deer last week and uh, when we were growling, so it was an extraordinary amount of body weight and fat was inside. It was far more than I'd ever seen. And this, that's the common thing now for the past year, just with the mild hunters, we're just more and more fat around these animals and they're real quality animals, you know. All the hinds are reaching weight, I think that's the most important thing, I think, because we had three very bad winters, Barney was saying, and it did knock things back a little. You know, the deer, I find with hinds as well, if they don't reach weight, they don't want him, they're not going to be covered. I am worried I'm not going to get to drink that wine. All is not lost. We head to the Barons Court Estate on the Northern Irish side, which is one of the centres of the local seeker population. They have just won a great taste award from the Guild of Fine Foods for their venison, beating off more than 10,000 entrants. We were delighted that our venison loin uh, shot here at Barons Court Estate, which comes from our Japanese seeker deer. Uh, was the recipient of a three gold star award, which is great news. And furthermore, not only were we in the, uh, obviously a recipient of the three gold stars, we were then went forward to the top 50 foods and uh, runner-up for the best in region in Northern Ireland. And we we're actually shortlisted for, for Supreme Champion, which sadly we didn't get. But um, I could let him go on, but you get the picture. He's very proud. The estate has a snazzy new game larder for processing both venison and game birds. Matt kindly hands over a cut of delicious venison. Look at that. So we get the meat, well that's good, but do we get the wine? Do we deserve the wine? It would have been rude not to. For more about stalking and fishing with Chris and Barney and at Glenmore, go to glenmorerivers.com. And that's that. <laughs> well, they didn't really give us an opportunity to pull the trigger there. If you want an opportunity to pull the trigger, why not go on the Holland and Holland stalking course? It's up next. <laughs> Here at Holland Holland, during the rifle course, we cover a wide range of topics, one of which is the rifle fit. This rifle doesn't fit Steve particularly well. If you see, there's too much eye relief here, so almost certainly you're seeing a shadow in the scope windows. Is that the case? Yeah. yeah? And what we could do with that is just drop the scope back, but we don't have much to play with here, about a quarter of an inch. Um, we'd almost certainly have to shorten the stock slightly with this as well. Notice a bit of a stretch here with the hand as well. Um, generally speaking, this, this rifle will, will recoil badly, by that I mean not particularly comfortably, um, and he won't shoot as well. So as I say, scope back as far as we can, and then shorten this rifle, I'd estimate about half an inch. He also is not getting a particularly good face position, so his face is, is not in a firm position on what we call the comb of the stock. We'll need to raise the stock to give consistency, to give the eye relief for consistent shooting. This rifle suits Steve much better. It's a little bit shorter in the stock, allowing him to get his head further forward, nearer the scope, giving a full picture through the scope, no shadowing around the outside. Um, he's also much less likely to hit his eyebrow with the scope with the larger caliber rifles. He's got a good stable position, so the left hand round underneath the stock, linking that in with the arm, giving a very, very stable base for a recoil control, but also 
consistent shooting and good support at the front. Noting there's nothing touching the barrel to interfere with the harmonics of that, which will ultimately interfere with where the bullet strikes. Finger position on the trigger is very good. The hand is gripping the whole hand area of the stock and Steve will need to squeeze that trigger to fire the rifle as opposed to pulling it as he would his shotgun. So Steve, if you have a dry shot now, rifle's unloaded, and concentrate on squeezing the trigger, that's, that's excellent, good. Notice absolutely no movement in the hand, that should have been a good shot. Now, we need to be able to repeat that each and every time. If you want more information about the course, go to hollandandholland.com. From northwest London to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start with films sent in. Neil Rubia 44 is a wild fowler and pigeon shooter from France. Here is his excellent channel trailer. We met Miles Orford in a recent episode of Schools Challenge TV. Now he's on YouTube and here's his evening duck flight. And Nick Rudisall from the USA sends in this film. Kabooby Kabooby Episode 7 has Rob Dunham hosting Magnum Hunt Club members in Tanzania looking for lion. Delta Force takes a good snapshot at a running boar in this short film, 27 kg at Tiddler. If you watched the first video from Your Hunting Buddy, you will know they went home empty-handed. Now their luck has changed. Pro Hunts Merg and his Maral hunting in Kazakhstan. It's a charming but slow film, showing what a gorgeous country Kazakhstan is. Nine Inch Fly is on a summer hunt for boar and deer. It's a long haul, this film, with some detailed post-mortems. And finally, this is superb. Project Alpha mounts cameras on the backs of falcons and sends them up after corvids. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you don't like those, maybe you'll like these. In this week's Fishing Britain, we have carp angling experts Tony Speets and Daryl Slater showing us how to haul on a public park lake. There may be a good head of fishing here, but how do you put your offerings in the right place every time? It's not all left to chance. In fact, there's obviously a guy in the um, brolly, and what I'm doing is aiming the tall tree right in the background, the highest point. I'm aiming for that, so when it's dark at night, I, I can see that every time. So casting, literally, I'm just literally punching it back and out to that. Because you're clipped up and you've got the, the marker on the line, you'll hit the same spot even at night time every single time. And accuracy will um, pull off the, the bites at the end of the day. I get some some lovely pole elastic, luminous, green or orange. Um, I use orange. I just, I just prefer it. And it's the only thing the shop had at the time. I'll just do a couple of overhand knots, just pull it tight. That literally is telling me every time if it runs, if it's out the cliff, I would get screaming running, it pops a line out the clip, is that I can just cast it away from the area, bring it back to that point, clip it up, and I know every single time that's hit in the same spot, as long as I stand in the same spot on the bank. Tony and I have very different opinions as to uh, how to hit get back onto the mark. Um, Tony uses obviously his pole elastic uh, and I like to use um, sticks um, and then count wraps so that if I go into a swim that I've fished before I just know that it's a certain amount of wraps and the wraps are set at a certain distance so you can always get back out on the same spot. Uh, but as with always I get a little bit of banter from my, uh, my colleague and he's just told me that uh, if I was going to do this much wrapping, he'd bring his decks down next time. Tying a knot in it or doing some wrapping, they both seem to be working. And to see how the guys got on with the rest of the session, then click the link on the screen and watch Fishing Britain right here on Field Sports Channel. It's how to buy cartridges on this week's Schools Challenge TV. Will Ford is talking to the experts, including Commonwealth Games double trap gold medalist Steve Walton. That's not all. There is news, Breeding School and Abby Burton is holding a young shot stay. Click on the link on the screen for more. And next week, you get not one, but two shows from us, as well as Field Sports Britain. It's the first of a series of programmes made by champion shot George Digweed and the launch of Club Digweed. Come back on Wednesday, the 1st of October 2014 to find out more.
We are back next week. Please don't hesitate to subscribe to this show or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click the like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into the constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our show, Field Sports Britain, that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>